Hello, my name is Carrie Jensen, and this is a quick look at live bindings in Rad Studio. This is part five of a five part series. In this part, we'll look at live bindings and side effects. This is my favorite part of live bindings. The reason why is as I have been exploring live bindings and talking to Rad Studio developers about live bindings, one common theme has emerged, and that is developers tell me live bindings, while they're great for making FireMonkey components data aware, they don't do anything different than what we already have in Delphi. And they go on to usually say that not only is it not different, but it's more complicated to do than traditional techniques. Those traditional techniques they're talking about are event handlers. I happen to disagree with that position. I feel that live bindings are different. How they work is different, and what they do is different. And this can best be seen if you look at live bindings and the side effects they can cause. I'm going to open up Rad Studio here. Well, I have it open already. And I'm going to bring up a sample application that I talk about in my live bindings webinar and I wrote about in the live bindings paper. Let me run this application and then show you the result of the side effect that is produced by live bindings. When I click this button, the data set opens and the, the caption of this button changes. A caption on another button changes as well. And when I click either of those buttons, the client data set closes. This well, you, what you might expect is that if we looked at that event handler, that you would see some code that says something to the effect of if the client data set is open or if the button's caption is, clo uh, op is, is closed, then we will open the client data set. But that's not what we see. What we see is the typical notification used by a managed live bindings to notify the expression engine to evaluate an expression. There's actually very little in the way of code on this form. There is uh, the, some code that when the form is created, the client data set is pointed to. We point to a client data set in the same directory as the application. And we choose the current page control to be the, or the, uh, we set the uh, page control to view the tab sheet one, or the first tab sheet of the application. Now this, you see this method here, but that's just, circumstantial, it's not called by the event handler. It, in fact, is a function of the form. Now let's look at the live binding that I'm talking about. This is the live binding here. And if we look at the live binding, we will see that the control expression is this object called open close action. And the source, comp uh, source expression is also open close action. Open close action is an action item in this action list. This action item is being used by this button. So you can see there. Furthermore, this action item has an event handler that is the same event handler used by most of the other managed controls on this form. And that's the, that's the event handler we saw here with just the, simply the call to notify. Furthermore, this action item has properties, including its caption, as well as its many other properties it could share with any controls that use this action item. And it, as must be obvious, both of the buttons on this form use this action item. And therefore, when the action item's caption changes, the caption on both of the buttons change. And when you click either of the buttons, the on execute event handler of the action uh, the action item executes. So returning our attention back to this expression, the source expression is a call to the method that we saw in that form where a boolean expression is passed as an argument. Now I could have done this a lot of different ways. In this case I just happened to pass a boolean expression that uh, equates or asks if the caption is equal to open. 
when we return to the code on the form, we'll see that this method of the form evaluates that Boolean expression if the Boolean expression is true, the client data is that it's opened, its log changes is set to false so that it does not maintain a change cache. If the uh, caption is not open, then this Boolean expression will be false and the client data set will be closed and saved and then the uh, the function returns open. In this case, what the effect is, is that effect that we see on the form. When we click the button that says open, the client data set opens as a side effect of the m method being executed. And when we click the button when it says close, the client data set is closed and the button's captions change. Now this is very, very different from a traditional event handler. The event handler is completely agnostic with respect to what operations are going to be performed. It's the expression engine and the live binding that synchronize the operations on that form. And that just simply is very, very different than traditional event handlers that execute methods or execute operations that are intentional in terms of that they know that they are controlling this particular object, they are testing the condition of that object, and then they are performing some action on this object. This is not what's happening here. The live binding expression is performing that task. Now let me show you another example that uh, also demonstrates this effect. Let me run this application first and then we'll look at the code. This is a currency converter. If I type in some number in dollars, that equa equivalent value in euros appears down in the uh, second edit. If I type some value in euros, the equivalent value in dollars appears in the, the corresponding edit. The code on this form is remarkably simple. The event handler, the on change of both of those edits is simply a notification to the expression engine to evaluate the expression. And the live binding, the single live binding that appears on this form is taking responsibility for this operation. You'll notice that there are two format expressions. This first one is assigned to control where the a control components expression is text and the source components expression is a reference to a converter property or it's actually a yeah, converter object of the owner which is the form and a call to a method on that converter which is convert to dollars. Since this is assigned to control the value of this expression is assigned to the uh, to, to this control here. This second expression is assigned to source and a corresponding conversion is performed by referring to the object that and then performing the assignment. The object that we're working with is one that's created on the create of the form and if we look at this object we'll see that it performs uh, these conversions and uh, uh, performs those assignments. Now in this case, we're just, and, and, and by the way, I have a property on here uh, called uh, dollar conversion and euro conversion. What I would really do in, the, in a real world application is I would reach out to a, uh, a service, maybe in the cloud, and, and pick up the current conversion, or maybe this, the current conversion value would be picked up every minute or so. In this case, I have uh, some constant values here, but that's not the point. Uh, in this uh, uh, version also, what's happening is that um, I am performing the operation within this class, but what the, these methods could have done is reached out and affected many other things. It's perfectly fine for the uh, for objects on the form to have methods and those methods could perform side effects. Once again I think this clearly demonstrates that live bindings are fundamentally different in what they do and when you consider the action item example that I showed and the side effect that it causes I think you must must agree that that type of effect is is not what you would achieve in a normal event handler. Thank you for joining me today in this quick look at live bindings.
For additional information, visit www.embarcadero.com slash rad in action slash live bindings. There you'll find the replay of my webinar, Visualizing Live Data with Live Bindings in RAD Studio. You'll also find a link to my paper, Live Bindings in RAD Studio, as well as links to the other videos in this Quick Look series. For information about the current Delphi Developer Days Tour, you can visit DelphiDeveloperDays.com. For information about my latest book, Delphi In-Depth Client Datasets, visit JensenDatasystems.com slash CDSbook. Finally, you can contact me at cjensen at JensenDatasystems.com or follow my blog or follow me on Twitter where I tweet about Delphi topics several times a week.